Hi, Dr. Simon Fry, consultant in clinical neurophysiology, back with the channel. And in this video, we're going to start looking at the effects of aging on the EEG. So let's start by considering a couple of different questions. Could or should age-related atrophy be considered a neurodegenerative state or disease? How does it differ and are there EEG differences? How do we define elderly? How do we define normal? And in fact, if you mask an EEG um, age from the person reporting it, we can actually find that about half of them um, in those who are more elderly would be classified as abnormal if we do that. So what exactly do we mean and, and what do we see on the EEG? Now, one of my favourite things that I do when I start looking at an EEG, any EEG really, is to try and work out the age of the subject. And uh, this is a, a lovely uh, trace over here, and you can see a couple of different things. We've, we've talked about what um, the alpha rhythm uh, looks like in other videos, um, but over here you can see an alpha rhythm um, of about um, 8 hertz or so, with a couple of underlying slow waves uh, every so often, uh, in the posterior regions um, over here really. Um, but I would roughly age this at about 65 to 70. We'll come back to this a bit later on. So what are the common findings that we, we see? So generally speaking, the uh, amplitude of the records becomes uh, smaller. There's a shift to uh, the lower range of frequencies of alpha. Uh, beta becomes lower voltage as well. There's an increase in background slower activities. The effects of hyperventilation become less marked and there are fewer mu rhythms. And in this uh, lovely uh, series um, of uh, studies from compiled by Dustman, um, you can see that the mean frequency goes from about 10 and a half down to eight and a half um, over the different decades illustrated. So an interesting question is, is why do cortical rhythms slow with age? And there are all sorts of different theories. Um, ultimately, we don't really know. Personally, I, I like the idea that there are reductions through cerebral perfusion, and possibly metabolism as well, but um, I haven't got a solid answer for that. Now, Klaas and Brenner came up with um, an interesting uh, point uh, back in the uh, 90s. Um, here's an EEG which they've recorded, and you can see some um, underlying slow waves over here in the left temporal region on top of uh, an otherwise well-formed alpha rhythm, and they ask, is this pathological? They show another EEG, again, with a, a well-formed alpha rhythm, but on this occasion, there are some more underlying slow waves, um, mainly on the right, um, in the temporal and posterior regions. Um, and the clue over here actually is at the bottom where they say that the CT scan shows an old right occipital cortical infarction, which effectively means that this person has got uh, cerebrovascular disease. And they came up um, with um, a series of observations which um, effectively state that as we become older, you can except a small amount of underlying slowing, um, which uh, chiefly occurs over the age of 60, mainly in the temporal regions, um, doesn't really disrupt background activities, isn't particularly fixed, um, doesn't occur in rhythmic trains, and you can see the rest of the criteria over there, and they call this benign temporal delta transients of the elderly, or benign temporal theta of the elderly, as uh, it's more known uh, these days. So how do we distinguish um, these phenomena that we see in older people from small vessel disease. So it's suggested, as we've said already, that the slow waves are occurring in a very small proportion of the record, there's a lack of persistent focality, but I would put it to you that ultimately we are lacking a clear evidence base uh, for this. And I would move away from uh, considering something as being necessarily uh, labelled as normal as to something which is something seen at that age, because ultimately imaging has really evolved since CT scans of 1990. We now have MRI in common uh, use uh, with various sequences to better look at the cerebrovascular structure and FDG PET, PET as well. And so our understanding of what happens to the brain in terms of its circulation, particularly its microvasculature, has significantly come a, a long way. So although uh, we may uh, well see these things in older people, I would personally be quite cautious to label them as being normal. Coming back to this um, EEG, which I showed you before, uh, which I would have guessed uh, would have been from someone roughly about the age of 65 or 70, um, actually this particular person is way past 100 um, and uh, you can see quite nicely really that you can have very nice well-formed uh, alpha rhythms uh, with only some occasional underlying slowing um, even in the advanced extremities of age. 
Let's move on now from um, aging to the situation of mild cognitive impairment. And we know that the general risk of dementia in the elderly population is about one to 2% per year. But once people have become established with mild cognitive impairment, that jumps up to about 15% a year. And so the question then becomes is, are there EEG differences between progressive and stable MCI, um, which may be very helpful as a, a biomarker? in terms of predicting what may happen. So interestingly, if we have a look at the qualitative EEG changes, which are what tend to, to uh, be done, uh, these are only really subtle to get some mild alpha slowing. Um, and it's only particularly helpful if you have uh, serial EEGs, which actually becomes quite difficult to do. If we move on to quantitative EEG, and we've, we've talked about that uh, a little bit more detail um, in the EEG technologies, we tend to find an overall uh, reduction in power of all frequencies, particularly for alpha, and an increase in theta power Hour, particularly in the anterior um, regions. Interestingly, if we look at functional EEG, we get mixed results um, and it's not something which is particularly used outside of research um, settings. Now, can we predict age from EEG signals? Um, so, as I said, I've, I, I try and play a little guessing game as to what people's ages are, but people have looked at this very systematically and there are ways of trying to do this. And the important aspect of this is really the next bit is, um, can you predict uh, longevity? And in fact, various algorithms do exist, uh, which can help to uh, predict uh, longevity and particularly when there's um, a, a increasing difference between what we are seeing in terms of the EEG and the expected um, EEG for that particular age group. Coming back to the 1990s, this was really already known uh, back then because actually there's an interesting correlation between subclinical cardiovascular disease and the alpha frequencies which shift um, leftwards to the slower um, bands of, of alpha. And this brings us very neatly to perhaps the most important fundamental point about the brain, although we think about it as electrical jelly, it's actually highly vascular. There's a huge amount of piping that goes through it and a huge amount of metabolic activity that goes through it and any impairments of that will cause problems. So don't think of the brain as just electrical jelly, it's vascular electrical jelly. So um, in terms of our understanding of you know, what's normal aging and the neurodegenerative uh, state of the brain. Yes, the resting EEG of the normal aging brain may have some occasional and sporadic slow wave activity, but this will contrast with a neurodegenerative brain, which we're gonna go into more detail in the next video, which is more marked and more persistent slowing. And so therefore there are clearly factors which disrupt normal uh, cortical connectivity um, in the neurodegenerative state. So um, I hope you found that useful and I look forward to uh, joining you again uh, in the next video looking more at the uh, dementias in some more detail. Please do support the channel by hitting that subscribe uh, button down below, like and share and so on and uh, I hope to see you in the next video shortly. All the very best.